Hey church, hope you're doing well right now. If you're watching with us at the 10 a.m. service, we would love to engage with you in the chat. So right now, let us know where you're from, where you're at, maybe who you're watching with. Right now, we're watching with our dog. His name is Otis. Say hi, Otis. <laughs> Otis doesn't really talk right now. Uh, he's a dog. Uh, but church, we are so glad that you could be with us right now. We're so excited for this service and for what's ahead. And we would love to engage with you, church. Right now, there's gonna be a link or a QR code that's gonna pop up on our screen. Click on it, maybe scan it. It's gonna take you to a website. It's gonna ask you to upload a video. This video that we want you to upload are all the things that you, yes, you, are expecting for, for 2021. See, Jade and I, we are expecting for a whole lot this year. And I am excited that we get to partner with you hand in hand to go, this is what you and our church are expecting for this year. So we cannot wait to see the videos, wait to hear the stories of what you're expecting for to see what God was able to deliver this year. So please click on the link, scan the QR code, and we cannot wait to hear and see your stories. Yes. Right now we're going to head into a moment of worship. But before we do that, I just want to encourage you. I know that we've been doing online church for a long time now, but don't let this moment get too familiar. You know, it's easy just to sit down and to not really engage, but I just want to encourage you that Jesus can meet you wherever you're at, yeah. whether you are sitting in your apartment, in your house, whether you're driving in your car, maybe do something that you haven't done before. Lift your voice and actually sing along today Come on. because God has the power to meet you right where you're at and to do things in your life that only he can do. And so right now, just like I said, maybe step out to do something different today and trust that he's gonna meet you where you're at. So I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna head into yes. worship. Father, I just thank you right now for every person that is tuned in to watch today. God, I just pray that you would meet them in this very moment. Lord, that if their heart is broken, that you would mend that. If their body is sick, that you would heal them, Jesus. That they would feel an overwhelming sense of your presence right now in this moment as we begin to worship. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you're going to do and what you're going to impart into your people today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship.
thank you to our team for leading us in worship so beautifully as they do every single week. We're going to take a moment right now to continue in worship as we pray together as a church family. And I want to encourage you to know that we believe in the power of prayer. And so whatever it is that you're going through, I would encourage you to maybe write it in the, the comments or in the chat so that we can stand together if you're watching this live with us or you can follow the link we provide and you can connect with one of our team or staff to pray. And we want to stand with you and believe in for God to move and believing for him to deliver. And I also want to encourage you really quickly out of Psalm 27, something that has been encouraging me this week. It says this, Psalm 27, verse one, the Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And we live in a time where fear is all around us. If we want to look for it, there are so many things to be concerned with or to, to possibly worry or stress out about or fear. And I believe the confession of a Christian is to declare today that in the midst of it, not to turn a blind eye, but to say in the midst of it, the Lord is the light of my salvation and whom shall I fear? He's my stronghold and what shall I fear? And so I want to encourage you with that. Even if you're not feeling it, we're going to believe for God to move and to cast out fear. It says perfect love. Bible says perfect love, cast out all fear. And so we're going to pray that for our church, pray for our, our country this week as well. We, of course, are in a time where there is a transition in leadership, and we're going to pray for all of our elected officials right now. So I want to ask you to, to join me in doing so. Those that we voted for and those that we did not, we're going to pray that God ultimately would be the one speaking to them and that his peace would reign in our country. And so I would ask you right now to join with us as a church family. Jesus, we thank you that you are God. We thank you that you are good. We thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you that the events of the past year, year and a half, however long, uh, Father, that the events of the past few weeks, the past few days, Father, they're not a shock to you, that you're not uh, shaken, Father, but you remain the same. You still are King. You still are Lord. You still are Savior. You're still healer. You're still Redeemer. And so we call on you to be the answer that we so desperately need. Wherever people are sick right now, Father, we ask that you would heal their bodies. Father, we ask that you would uh, be the deliverer that we so desperately need. We ask that you would be the provider that we so desperately need for those who are experiencing lack, that you would provide. For those who are experiencing brokenness, that you would be the God who restores. Father, we look to you as our light and our salvation, as our stronghold. In whom shall we fear? Father, we ask right now, if anyone is experiencing fear, that by the power of your peace, that you would cast out that fear. Lord, we pray right now for our nation. We pray that your peace would reign. We ask that you would lead us, your, your church, you would lead us to be the salt in the earth the light on a hill to be the example of what it looks like to love you and to follow you and to live as you've called us to live. Father, that you would help us to, to be the example of Jesus in the world around us. And of course, we pray right now for every single one of our elected officials, regardless of their party affiliation, regardless of whether we agree with them or, or whether we don't. Father, we pray that your voice would break through the noise that your voice would be what would speak to their hearts and lead and guide the direction of our country. Father, we need you, desperately need you. We've always been desperate for you and every day we seem to be more and more aware of it. And so Father, we ask that you would move in a mighty way, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. And I'm not sure when it is that you're joining us, whether it's live or on demand, but we are currently heading into a celebration of the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as we celebrate uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And as a church, uh, of course, we're, we're all so grateful for his life and his legacy. Uh, a man who was um, unswerving in his commitment to justice, a man who was unswerving in his commitment to exemplifying the love of Jesus, not only just the, the, the justice that he fought for, but the way he did it. He believed so strongly that it was the love of God that we see personified in Jesus that would actually change this world. And so we continue in that commitment to justice and we continue in that commitment to exemplify the love of Jesus, believing that that is what is needed in this time to change the hearts of those who are hurting, to change the hearts of those who are hurting, 
others, the, the hatred and the evil and the racism that we see in our world, the answer, of course, is Jesus. And so we look to him and we follow the beautiful example and legacy of Dr. King. So we celebrate that to get today. And, and we're gonna do what we always do. As a church, we're gonna lean into the word and we're gonna believe for God to speak to us. And we have an absolute honor today from, uh, of hearing from Tulu Batters, who is our chief operations officer. And also in this time, she is our interim, one of our interim lead pastors and having the opportunity to, to work with Tulu uh, for several years now, I can tell you she is such a blessing, both professionally and personally. Uh, I think she does um, such a phenomenal job of just leading with such grace, strength, and wisdom. And I know that's exactly what we're gonna experience today as she preaches. She has such a depth of, I believe, wisdom when it comes to the Bible and what it looks like to live like Jesus. And so I'm excited for this word. I'm expectant for it. I wanna encourage you to lean in, take notes, shout her down from wherever you might be at this moment. And of course, I wanna throw out a reminder to, to those of you who maybe haven't had the chance to give. There's a link there that you can follow. Would encourage you to do that. I just believe that God blesses your faithfulness and your generosity in such a profound way. And so we say thank you. And for all of you who have continued to give in the season, a massive thank you. And we're so grateful for what you've done to continually uh, just be faithful in response to God's faithfulness. So we love you. Let's lean into this message right now. Let's have a great day. Be blessed. Hillsong East Coast Online Family, welcome to church 2021. You made it. We're here. We are here in the new year. We're so glad to have you. Thank you for taking the time to join us in this service. Shout out to all the people in our locations, Connecticut, New Jersey, Boston, and New York. We love you guys. And for those of you watching around the world, around the country, welcome. And shout out to those of you that are in our incredible house parties. I am so excited today to be sharing with you 2021. We are in a new year, and I hope you had a fantastic new year, that you kicked off the new year in an incredible way. You know, for me, to bring in 2020, I did the fabulous kind of New York, you know, new year last year. So last year around January, for the first day of the new year to bring on in 2020, I went to a party in Soho, and then I went to Times Square, you know, did all the things, the confetti's flying, we're yelling, the music's going, we're rah, 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 and then went back to a party, hung out there, you know, was up until like 4 a.m. This year, I went to my couch. It was the absolute, opposite. And actually, I think we have a picture of a side-by-side -side of, you know, last year's New Year's for me and, and this year's New Year's for me that we're going to that we're gonna put up. Um, and actually, as you're seeing that, you probably realize that's not me. That's actually Frodo. Um, but I think it represents how a lot of us felt on New Year's. Like, my New Year's last year was the complete opposite of my New Year this year. And Frodo, he's saying it is finished. You know, it's saying goodbye to 2020. You know, so many of us are feeling different kinds of ways about a new year. 2021, it's here already. You know, my family, we have this group thread that we're, we're on and the jokes about 2021 have started. So the memes have been going back and forth, like the one I just showed you. And I think we have a few of those. They've just been cracking me up. So there's one here where 2020, which is played by the Joker, is showing a clown who is 2021 around the workplace. That just really cracks me up. And then there's another one here. Somebody goes, look, I wanna cancel my subscription to 2021, um, no thanks, because things are already shaky. So needless to say, people are feeling a certain type of way. People are feeling different types of way about the new year. Some of you, you felt like, man, I barely made it. I felt like I dragged myself across that finish line of 2020, and I'm already feeling exhausted in January. You know, a friend of mine, he said, man, I'm wondering if this is going to be just Groundhog Day. Again, just a repeat of last year. So some people, they're feeling tired. They're feeling a little daunted by the year. But then other people, are feeling excited. There's the new year, new me is already going. They're making their resolutions. They're excited for the turn of a chapter, a new year and a new day. But regardless of how you're feeling, you know, we're, we're walking into uncharted territory. And I believe God wants to help us navigate it. So I'm gonna share with you today, I'm gonna share a passage out of Joshua. And um, it's the story of the Israelites. And I've really leaned on the Israelites in the past year. I feel like some of the ebbs and flows and the journeys that they go through really speak to the times that we're in. 
So just to give you a little bit of context, so the Israelites, they've left Egypt and they were in the wilderness for 40 years. My goodness, they were in the wilderness for 40 years. And Moses, who's been leading them, he passed away. And Joshua is stepping in to lead the people and God is telling them it's time for them to go into the promised land. So in Joshua 1, it says this. Joshua 1, starting with the second verse, God says this to Joshua. He says, now then, you and all these people, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them. To the Israelites, I will give you every place you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And I love this part here. I will never leave you or forsake you. And I want to repeat that because I feel like that's for somebody out there. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. And after that, so God speaks to Joshua. He says that word. Joshua gets everyone, all the Israelites, the family, the armed men, the priest, and they cross the Jordan River. And how do they cross it? God parts the river, just like he did the Red Sea years before. He parts it. They walk across it, and they get to Jericho. And the famous battle of Jericho happens, and God says, I'm going to deliver this city to you. But what I need you to do, I need you to march around the city for seven days. So they marched around for seven days. And then he said, after that, I want you to shout. So on the seventh day, they marched around a bunch of times, and then they shouted, and the wall came down, and then they fought and defeated their enemies. And then after that, battle after battle, victory after victory. They conquered town after town after town. And then after that, they entered the promised land and God allowed them to enter a season of rest. There's a phrase in that passage that jumped out to me. God said to them, get ready to cross. He's saying, get ready to go to the other side. Get ready for a new season. Get ready for battle. Get ready to take possession of the land that I'm gonna give you. Get ready to enter the promised land. And it made me pause and jumped out to me because I think it couples with a question that God is asking us as we walk into this season. You know, so many of us were going, what does this year hold? So much unknown. Is it going to be a repeat? But I think God is asking us a question. There's a question I believe he's been asking me and he's asking you. And Pastor Earl McClellan, actually, in his awesome message a few weeks ago, he touched on this phrase. And it's a phrase that we probably say it all the time. I said it to my spouse uh, this morning. I said it to Brett this morning. Here's the question. It's the title of this message. Are you ready? Are you ready? Drop it in the chat right now. Say, are you ready? If you're watching this message with someone, ask them, are you ready? Church family, I think God is asking us, are you ready? Are you ready for what this year holds? Are you ready to step into what he has for you in this season? Are you ready for it? Are you ready for good days and bad days? Are you ready to step out into unknown and uncharted territory? Are you ready? And some of you, you know, like me, I was kind of in denial of this year. And maybe the first few days of the year, I'd have said, I'm not ready. Lord, no, I, I'm not ready. But I think God is going, look, I want to use you because it's through the storms and the wildernesses, the mountains, but also the good days. It's through those days that God uses faithful, ordinary people to do extraordinary things, to write epic stories. So are you running away already? Or are you getting yourself prepared for God to use you? I think God is waiting for men and women that are gonna rise up. They're gonna be prepared and ready to step into the unknown, step into his calling for them. So I don't know what this year holds, but I know God holds it and he's ready to use us. We just need to be ready to use by him. So today I want to talk about a few things that I think we need to do to be ready. I'm going to talk about three things that we need to do to get ready for this year. The first thing is this. We need to draw near to God. We need to draw near to God. Hebrews 10 verses 22 says this. It says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings. We need to get closer to him. 
You know, as we step into unknown, we've never been here before. We've never been in this particular time. And I think God, he wants us to draw near to him. He wants us to have a relationship with him. He wants to talk to us. He wants us to talk to him. He wants us to learn of his ways and get his guidance and hear his wisdom and direction. He wants us in his presence. So we need to draw much closer to God, as close as we can get. And in order to do that, we have to remain in him. We have to remain in him. John 15 says this, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So in order to draw closer to God, we need to get disciplined about disciplines. Woo, two words you probably, you know, just don't like. Discipline about discipline. There are practices found in the Bible that promote spiritual growth among Christians. And it's so important for us. We need to master them and get trained and learn them as much as possible. Put them into our rhythms and our habits as we live. You know, so, so there's so many of the spiritual disciplines. There's worship, there's prayer, study, meditation, rest, hello, rest. Some of you are like, yeah, I'll take that one. Fasting, fellowship, celebration, discipleship. So I just encourage you this year, pick two or maybe even three for this year that you said, I'm gonna get disciplined about these disciplines. Why is it important? Because it restores us, it calibrates us, it guides us, it trains us, it reconciles us. It's so important and helps us to grow as we remain in God. So two that I'm gonna focus on this year, and I think are really important for our entire church in this season. The first one is studying and meditating in the word. I think that's really important in this season because as we read the Bible, it tells us who God is and it tells you who you are. It gives you guidelines to live by. And there's something for every single season that we face in the Bible, God speaks to it. And it's such an incredible, incredible thing to just get within yourself. Meditate on it day and night, the Bible says. Meditate on the word. You know, write down a passage in the beginning of the day, and then at the end of the day, review it. Just meditate, memorize scriptures as much as possible. Get the word in you, because in times like this, we need the best guide in the, in, the, in the world. We need the best manual, and that's the Bible. The next thing is prayer. I'm believing that through our church that God is gonna raise an army of prayer warriors. Let's bring back prayer, talking to him night and day, telling him your concerns, listening, asking him questions. You know, I love when I read about King David in the Bible, because he, he has conversational prayer with God. That's all it is, is talking with God. And he asks God things like this. He goes, hey, should I step into this battle? Should I go into battle? And then God goes, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna uh, win that battle, go into it. And he goes, okay. And I feel like there's so many parts of our day that we need to talk to God about in prayer. How should I approach this meeting? You know, I'm waiting for wisdom on how to, how to approach my child. God, speak to me. How to do that? He wants to do that. He wants to speak. He wants to be in constant conversation with us. So it's so important. Let's keep continuously talking to God and being in prayer. You know, I think God's greatest victories that he has for us, I think it starts in prayer. Your greatest battles that you're gonna win, it starts on your knees. So make sure that you're staying in prayer. You know, these are just simple things. Reading the Bible, praying, there are small things, but doing small things consistently leads to extraordinary results. So we need to get disciplined about the disciplines. The next thing that's important as we try to draw near to God is we need to remove things that create distance between us and Jesus. Hebrews 12 says this, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that easily, so easily entangles. You know, there's so many things in our life and God's probably been speaking to you about it. It might be creating distance between you and God. Things that are maybe compromising you from hearing from him. Things that are compromising you from stepping into the things that he called you to. Things that are just putting distance between you and him. You know, and I don't, I'm not talking about your kids. Some of you are like, great, I can't hear from God because of my kids. No, you can't get rid of your kids, but there's some things that maybe you need to remove and eliminate in your life. For some of you, it's maybe relationships that are really unhealthy, and you need to maybe put yourself some distance there from it. For some of you, it's hurry. You know, we read a book about eliminating hurry as a team last year. And I think for so many of us, our schedules are so packed and we need to clear our calendars so that we can hear from God. He's speaking all the time and we're so busy that we're not hearing it. We need to create more margins in our calendar. And that was one of the lessons I learned last year. 
because we had my, my, my March, my April, my May, the whole year was just packed to the brim. I had trips. I was, you know, working crazy hours, like just everything. And I just had no margin. So when we went into quarantine, everything got canceled and I couldn't believe it. But just having the margin, it, compl it changed my life. I had so much more time for family, so much more time for just lingering and listening and spending with God. And it's so important. We need to create breath and make room for him to speak in the way that we live our lives. So clear those calendars and make margin. For the, some of you, it's eliminating a lot of bad habits and establishing healthy routines, finding your flow, you're eating, you're sleeping, you know, you're working out, the time that you stop working every day. We need to put in healthy routines. You know, so for me, certain foods make me more grouchy, make me a little more lethargic. And if I get a certain, like, uh, level of sleep, less than a certain number of hours, I'm not on my A game. You know, we need to find rhythms and routine that refuel us, that allow us to be the best absolute version of ourselves, allow us to be great conduits for God to use. And we just need to do them consistently. Some of you need to eliminate distractions. Some need to remove some idols. And maybe your phone has become an idol. Has anything in your life become an idol? Is anything st standing in the place that God should be? Remove those things. For some of you, it might be unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is creating distance between you and God. For others, it's repentance. And I love Pastor Matt's message last week. He talked about repentance. Some of us need to repent and turn away from things. You know, and for some of you, it's healing. You're dealing with so many wounds and it's, it's putting distance between you and God because you're dealing with this wound. And as I preached in my last message, I really believe God is gonna bring restoration. He wants to restore you. He wants to restore your relationships, reconcile and heal those wounds. You just need to spend some time with him, remain in him, give him the time to do that work and he's gonna do it. For some of you, we actually need to leave some things behind. I'm gonna spend some time here. We need to leave some things behind. You know, in the story that I was talking about with the Israelites, that wasn't the first time that the Israelites were approaching the Promised Land. They actually had approached the Promised Land 40 years before when Moses was leading them. And God said, hey, send some spies in. Send some spies in to check out the land. So they went and checked out the land. He goes, I'm about to give it to you so you guys can occupy it. Go and check out the land. They went to go check out the land and they got terrified. They saw the men there and they went, oh my goodness, we can't do this. They had no faith in God. They came back and they spread all of that to all the Israelites. They, they, were, they, were, they were terrified. And it just was pandemonium, I imagine, because then all the Israelites are going, we're not gonna go, we're not gonna go. And God goes, look, you're not ready. And a lot of you, most of you, except for two of them, you're not gonna see the promised land. So a lot of them, they died in those 40 years. They didn't make it to the promised land. You know, and I think for our lives personally, there's some things that need to be left in the desert, in the wilderness season, that doesn't need to come with us into the promised land. You know, I love when God, he's speaking, he's, he, start, he starts pulling themes together. As I was looking at the incredible messages that have been preached in the past few weeks, there was a similar, there were similar themes and threads through it. You know, Pastor Chris Kane, she preached that message about staying on the ship. And she said, some of your ships needed to be run aground. You know, Pastor Earl, as he was preaching about releasing the fire, he said, some things need to be burned off of us in the fire. And Pastor Matt Burgess, as I mentioned, he started saying, we need to repent because repentance actually makes room for God. And I feel this is the same thing. There are some things that we need to leave behind that God has been whispering to you and saying, hey, look, I need you to release this and stop holding on to this. So I just want to ask you, what are you holding on to? that's been creating distance, what are some things that you need to leave in the desert? Maybe it's part of your past. Maybe it's something that like has def been defining your identity that doesn't need to, part of your security. What are you holding on to that you need to leave behind? Just release it. Just release it so you can move forward. Remove these things and draw near to Him. And it's gonna be one of the things that's gonna help you get ready. The second thing that we need to do to get ready is we need to hold on to hope. We need to hold on to hope. Hebrews 10, 23 says this, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. I absolutely love that. Hope is an anchor for our soul. Hope in Jesus is an anchor for our soul. And let me tell you, you need the right anchors to withstand and make it through some of the stormiest seasons. We need to have the right anchors. And last year, for me personally, my goodness, I felt tossed around. I don't know about you. Like it was a stormy, stormy 
year. You know, and you felt like just challenged. Some of you maybe lost jobs, health, relationships. Some of you, you, you know, lost your optimism and you felt challenged left and right. You felt like the rug was pulled out from under you. You felt unsettled and you've been challenged in so many ways. Your faith was challenged. Your resolve was challenged. Your courage was challenged. Your positivity challenged. And you know, for me, I had to take account of what I was holding on to. Am I holding on to hope in Jesus or my own capacity, my own strength, or another man or woman? Hope in Jesus, it anchors us during the storm. Why? First of all, because he's faithful. Even when you fail, God is faithful. Even in the darkest hour, he is faithful. Even when we forget, he is faithful. Even when you're afraid, he is faithful. Even when you're lost, he is faithful. Even when you lose trust, God is faithful. He never changes. His goodness, they stay forth. God is faithful. And through his faithfulness, he always provides. You know, I love reading the story of the Israelites because they talk about God gives them this thing called manna. And it's because they're hungry. They're like, man, we're hungry. So he goes, good. I'm going to provide for you the food that you need, like their daily bread. So every day this would rain from the sky. And what was so cool is when they entered the promised land, it said the very day, because they were entering a land where there's going to be produce that they were going to be able to eat. And it said the manna stopped that day. So he knows, he knows exactly what you need to the very day, and he's going to provide it. And as they were wandering through the wilderness, he provided a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. He is going to lead you through the day. He's going to lead you through the night. He will lead you through the sunny days and the stormy days. He will get you through. He is with you. He will enlarge you through it. He'll sustain it through it. He will provide every single thing you need for that season. Through his faithfulness, he always fulfills his promises that he's made. And I think that's for some of you out there. God is a promise keeper. And there's some things maybe he's whispered to you. He's told you that he's going to do some dreams you've been holding on to for years. Some of you decades. Let me tell you something. If he said it, he's going to do it. And if he starts it, he's going to finish it. So hold on to hope. God is going to fulfill those things. You know, it might take a little longer than we were planning. You know, I was, um, I was reflecting on the past uh, few years. You know, I journal a lot. And I was looking at previous years of, of, of journal entries. You know, in the beginning of every year, I write down dreams and promises that I feel like God has made me. And it blew me away as I was reflecting this year, a few weeks ago, as I was reflecting. There were so many things that God, I've been praying for, and I even forgotten about it. And there was such a major thing in the past and God had fulfilled them. He'd fulfilled those promises. But you know what? There are also some things I've been writing year after year that I feel God has promised me that hasn't happened yet. But I'm believing because I know we serve a faithful God that is a promise keeper. He's gonna bring it to pass. It might not happen on my timeline. My goodness, we create so many timelines that really have nothing to do with God. The Bible says the with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. He's working on a completely different time schedule than we are. I'm not saying it's going to take a thousand years for your thing to happen, but I'm saying give it time. God is going to fulfill what he said he's going to fulfill. You know, he made a promise to Abraham. He said, I'm going to multiply you and make you into a great nation. And it took generation after generation for God to do that. God sometimes works in generations. He works sometimes in years. He sees the big picture. We just need to have faith and be patient because he's going to fulfill that promise. So anchor your hope in his promises. You know, I love in the Bible, for every single thing that we're facing in this season, God has a promise for it in the Bible, and we can hold on to those promises because he is a promise keeper. God is in control. He is Lord of all. God's in control. He is sovereign. Are there any control freaks out there? I'm here to tell you God is in control. For the control freaks, I'm raising my hand because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out there. I'm a control freak. Last year, I had to hold, let go of my illusion of control. Some of you are going, what are control freaks? There are people who freak out when they are not in control of something. You know, I love a good plan. My goodness, when, when something doesn't go according to plan, I, I just, I lose it. I love a good plan. In fact, I love planners. So this year I started with, I have three print annual planners for 2021. Why do I know three? I, I don't know. I have three of them. I have two monthly ones. I have a weekly one and three daily ones. And on top of that, I have three digital electronic calendars because I love 
just a plan. I love it. Color coding it, looking at the plan. I make a backup plan, and then my backup plan has a backup plan. I mean, my goodness, I love to plan. So when things don't go according to plan, and my backup plan doesn't hold, my backup backup plan doesn't hold, you know, I start to freak out. So last year, I had to let go of the illusion of control because my plans aren't in control. God is in control. And there's so many things last year that just, it, it made me unsettled because I think I was holding on my anchor to my to things in my capacity, holding them to my plan. And so there were things last year that were devastating and heartbreaking, but it also just shattered control. Like you're just going, what what's happening here? Like this is crazy. And I just felt control slipping through my fingers. But here's the thing, control freaks, I'm speaking to you. God is in control. And that really means he holds everything together. And the Bible says he turns ashes into beauty. So anything that we make of this world, he can work it for good. He holds my future. He holds my present. He holds my past in his hands. And I just need to relinquish it to him and just believe that he's got it. So I'm here to tell you, put your confidence and your hope in the one that holds your past, your present, and your future. Don't put it in yourself. Don't put it in another human beings, not your plans or your backup plans. Put your hope and confidence in Jesus. In Psalm 27, it says this, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army besieges me, my heart will not fear. The war break out against me. Even then, I will be confident. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and take heart and wait for the Lord. We need to take heart and just hope in God. He's gonna protect us. He's gonna rescue us. And control freaks out there. You just need to let go of control. You know, for me, one of the journeys that God took me on is flying. I hate flying. My friends know it. I've been on, on this journey. I just afraid of flying. I don't get it. People have explained to me the physics and the aerodynamics and all of that, but it just seems unnatural to me that we're in this like aluminum or whatever is made up thing and we're going really quickly in the air. You know, so when I'm getting on a plane, particularly long flights, you know, if I'm going to Australia, oh my goodness, I'm like, man, that pilot, he looked a little young. Like, I, I don't know whether he knows what, what he's doing. I don't know whether he knows what he's doing. And we hit turbulence, which people are like, oh, it's just like bumps in the road, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but I'm in the air. We hit turbulence and I go, Lord, is this it? Is it over? Do I need to prepare myself, you know, for this? But God has just gone, man, you really don't trust me. You don't trust that I've got this. I have a purpose for you. This plane is not going down. So just relax and just enjoy the flight. And I feel like God is saying that to some of us in our lives, just relax and enjoy the ride, enjoy the flight, because God has got you covered. We just need to do our part. We just need to trust him. Like I talked about before, we just need to talk to him in prayer. That's what we do. God holds, he holds the keys. He holds all of our days. He holds our future. We just need to come to him in prayer. And I love prayer. It's such a beautiful thing because it gets our eyes on him. You know, fear and anxiety, it's focused on what we can do within our own strength. But as we pray, as we say we have faith and put our faith in him, there's an exchange that happens. We fix our eyes on Jesus, and then you take your worries, you take your concerns, you take your care, and you give it to God. And then you exchange it, he gives you peace. He gives you all of his fruits as you do that. And there's a beautiful thing that happens there in prayer. So we just need to get on our knees. We need to trust him, have faith. And then after that, you do your part. You do what you can do, and then God is gonna do what you cannot do. That's it. You do what you can do, and then you trust him to do what you can't do. And that's what trust and faith looks like in him. It's so important for us to let go of control. God has got it. So we just need to anchor ourselves to him. Next thing we have to hold on to is that he has plans for you. And I wanna to speak to some of you out there right now, you've lost your optimism and your positivity and you're feeling, you're feeling lost. You're wondering about your future. There are things that you've been believing for that haven't come to pass. And I'm here to tell you, God, he has a future and a plan for you. In Jeremiah 29, starting with verse 10, he says this, I will come to you and fulfill 
my good promise. He's a promise keeper. I'll fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I love that. Some of us need to hold on to that promise. God has a future and a plan for you. He didn't bring you through last year for no reason. If you're still here and hearing the sound of my voice right now, he has a divine purpose for you. He has a work to do in you and through you. He is not finished yet. You just need to trust and hold on to hope. Put your faith in Jesus and he's going to use you. God has a future for you. I'm preaching that to you. Speak it to yourself. God has a future and a plan for me. So I just need to hold on to hope. So let's not anchor our hope to ourselves or another human being. We can hold on to his promises, to his word, to Jesus. He will not fail us. The third thing that we need to do to get ready is we need to be faithful. We need to be faithful men and women. How do we be faithful? Here's the thing that I wanna hit. We need to be obedient. What do I mean by that? You're like, oh, obedience, gosh, what a word, obedience. We need to be faithful and listen to what God asks us to do. And the things that he asks us to do regularly, we do them regularly. We are obedient. You know, faith typically requires an action. In Hebrews 11, it says this, it's talking about Abraham. It says, by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place, he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. It's really simple. We need to do the things that God has asked us to do. The Israelites, in order to take possession of that land, they had to defeat the enemy. They had to take that land and fight battle after battle after battle. They had to cross the Jordan River. Faith and action go hand in hand. And I'm encouraging you guys, there are things that God is asking you to do. What is God asking you to be obedient about? So many legendary people in the Bible, ordinary people with faith in an extraordinary God, they just had faith and obeyed. They did what God was asking them to do, and then God used them in extraordinary ways. So I wanna ask you, what is God asking you to do? What has he been asking you to do as you step into this year? You know what, you know what it is. Maybe some of you have been running away from it. It's kind of been nagging at you, you know it. You know God's spirit is speaking to you and asking you to do things. For some of you, it's fighting battles. And let me encourage you, as he did with the Israelites, God will give you the instruction to fight the battles that he wants you to face. He's gonna give you everything that you need for it. You know, for some of you, he's asking you to defeat giants. There's some things that you need to face, new giants. And I love when I read the story of David and Goliath. You know, David, he was, he, was, he was faced with a giant and everyone is terrified of this giant, you know, and he's taunting them and he's taunting the Israelites and he's going, who's gonna come out here and defeat me? And this young man, David, he goes, look, I'm gonna go and defeat them. And everybody's looking at his family. They're going, man, are you crazy? You're gonna go out there and fight, fight, that, fight that giant, fight that Goliath? And he goes, you know what? I have defeated lions and bears. And he says, this Philistine will be like one of them. This Philistine is gonna go down just in the way that I've defeated all of those. And I think for so many of us, we're facing a new giant that God has actually prepared us to. He's given us the thing that we need in our hand to fight that giant. And we need to be like, David, I recognize this guy. I know this one. I know I can defeat it. This Philistine is gonna be like one of them. This giant is gonna come down just like the other battles that I have fought before. We just need to be bold and courageous. And courage, it is not the absence of fear. Of course you're afraid. It's stepping out even in the face of it. And so many of us, we need to run toward our giants. That passage said that David, he ran toward the battlefield to fight Goliath. In some ways, we're running away. We need to run toward that giant. Take whatever God's placed in your hand and knock it through at that giant, it's gonna come down. Some of you are being asked to step into uncharted ground and to leave some things behind. Maybe it's professionally or, uh, or personally. There's something new you're supposed to do, some uncharted territory, and you're, you're terrified to step into it. But he's got you covered. You know, I love, when we're reading the story of Joshua, I was talking about them crossing the Jordan. You know, Joshua 3, it says, Yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap 
a great distance away. I love that. As your foot, you take that step of faith, and as you set your foot, as it touches that new territory, that new season, that new thing that God is asking you, he parts and he makes a way for you. So you don't not need to be afraid. God's gonna make a way for you. You just need to step forward. Let your foot go down. Let yourself step into this new chapter, new season, and God is gonna do it. Some of you, you're being asked just to simply have faith. Your faith has been challenged and God is just going, I just need you to believe with me. Like Sarah, God brought her a son in her old age. She just needed to believe, believe that God was gonna do it. Some of you, your faith has been challenged. I'm here to tell you, step out courageously and hold on to hope and just believe. And for others of you, it's, it's simply withstanding a storm. God just wants you to just stand up and rise up within that storm and not to get afraid of it and just command it. Command peace as Jesus did as he crossed over in the river. Command peace into that storm and just stand through the storm. What is he asking you to do in this season? What is he asking you to do? It's just important for us to just step out in obedience, even through fear, even through doubts. We just need to step out and be obedient to what God is calling us to do. You know, in Hebrews 11, I love that, the, the whole chapter. It's just talking about men and women of faith. It, you'll read it through and, and it'll say, Abraham by faith, Sarah by faith, Noah by faith, Joseph by faith, Israelites, faith, 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 faith. Person after person after person. They weren't perfect, but they were ready to act in faith during critical times. You know, I believe, church, that we are in critical times, crucial times critical times in our personal worlds, critical times in the nation, critical times in our church, in our world. And we need courageous men and women who are ready to act in faith. He is going to do extraordinary things this year. I'm believing for a season of transformation, believing for a season of revelation, of reconciliation, of restoration, of revival, believing God is gonna bring revival to our land and healing and breakthrough. But just like the Israelites, we have got to take a hold of it. We've gotta take a hold of it. He's gonna lead us through every season, the good days and the bad. He isn't leaving us. He's not gonna forsake us, but he has given us the authority to take possession of this land and we need to take possession of it. He's given us authority to take possession of this year, of this season. We just need to get up in faith and stand. We have the authority to command this year, command our days that we will be victorious. We need to rise up and stand. Every day, wake up and speak to that day. Speak the promises that God has made to you into that day and command it. I know it's not gonna be perfect. There may be storms. There may be trials and wilderness seasons, but also promises will be fulfilled. Dreams are gonna happen. Miracles are gonna happen through, through this year, but we're not gonna take it without a fight. So we need to gear up and get ready. We don't need to be perfect. Everything, all the plans don't need to be as they need to be. We just need to draw near to him. We need to hold on to hope and we need to step out in faith. We need men and women that are gonna come and arise and stand up and go, come what may this year. Come what may in this season. I am here for it. I am ready. I am ready. I am ready. You know, I wanna read the passage that I read. I read that God was speaking to Joshua. I wanna read it, parts of it to you. It says, now then get ready to cross. I will give you every place you set your foot. As I promised Moses, your territory will extend. No one will be able to stand against you. I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous. Are you ready, church? Are you ready? Are you ready? Let me pray for us. Father, we just thank you so much for your faithfulness. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you crown this year with your goodness. Father, we say to you that we are ready. We are preparing ourselves for whatever you have in this season. God, I pray for those that are dealing with doubts and fear right now. Lord, we pray for your hope and your light through situations. Lord, Father, rise up courage within us, Lord, Father, so that we may step foot into what you have and lay claim, Lord. And we thank you in advance for everything that you're going to do in this, in this next season, Lord. We are ready. Lord, Father, use us. 
Use us, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. For those of you that want to have a relationship with Jesus and don't, I wanna give you an opportunity to start a relationship with him. You know, the Bible said that God so loved the world that he sent his son Jesus to die for you and him so that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. You know, the Bible says that he, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He knows our past, he knows what you've done, and he loves you just the same. And he's ready to enter into relationship with you. So if you are wanting to start a relationship with Jesus, I just need you to say this prayer with me right now. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your son, Jesus. Lord, I am a sinner and I need your forgiveness. Today I choose to follow you. By your grace, I am saved. Thank you so much for a new day, Lord Father, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, if you said that prayer, you can even write it in the chat if you're joining us for the 10 a.m. and say, look, I made that decision. And then we have a link that you can find in the description. You can click it and you can get more information that's gonna help you as you start this relationship with Jesus. Congratulations. That is absolutely the best decision that you can ever make. We are so excited that you are starting this new journey. Well, I love you, church. I hope you have the very best week ever. Get prepared. Get ready for this new season. 2021, let's do this. God bless. Love you. Oh, come on now, Tulu. What an incredible message for such a time as this, heading into the new year, personally for me and for our church. So thankful that you gave us your heart in that message. And church, I want to encourage you, if that spoke to you in any way, shape, or form, share the link. Yeah. Encourage someone in your workplace, maybe your school, maybe you know someone needs to hear encouragement right now. I want to encourage you to share the link with someone in and around your world right now. Yes, and listen, if you are looking to receive prayer, if you have questions about our church, or if you just wanna chat with someone on our staff, there's a link that should pop up right now that will enable you to do all of those things. And so click on that link and make sure to come back next week. Meet us right here at 10 a.m. Share the link like Raf said, watch it on demand, but we will see you here next Sunday at 10 a.m. We love you, church. Have an amazing week. Love you, church. See you soon.